What's up guys? It's Patricia from tarantulaheaven.com. Welcome to Tarantula Tuesday where we make videos about tarantulas and spiders every week on Tuesday. And this is my co-star, Miss Spidey. Well, I would say she's probably the main star to be honest. Um, she's currently laying down so she's probably not going to move for us today. But um, that's okay because she's still here and I hope you guys can still see her. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about the science behind gut loading for tarantulas. More experienced tarantula owners may be very familiar with this, but uh, my channel is geared more towards beginners and people who just like to really dive into more of the learning kind of stuff. And so um, we're going to talk about gut loading today. One thing that I know and you know about tarantula owners and possibly yourself is that we really, really care about these spiders. You know, I think that people who own dogs and cats, you know, they get um, quite a reputation for being really fanatic, but these people have obviously never met tarantula owners and know nothing about the tarantula keeping hobby. Uh, the things that I see from tarantula groups and websites about the types of enclosures you guys make, the types of uh, the crazy extent of, of effort that we'll go through to make our spiders happy is really amazing. But I don't know if we spend the same amount of time on things like diet and nutrition. So is it just enough to feed your spiders some bugs? So if you're feeding your tarantulas bugs and insects that are safe and nutritious for them, you know, come from a good spot, you know, they haven't been exposed to any pesticides or chemicals, you probably believe that you're doing all that you can, and that is amazing. However, gut loading can still be helpful. It's a technique that is used all over the exotic pet hobby, not just for tarantulas. So gut loading is actually where you pay special attention to, um, obviously, not only the feeders that you're giving your spider, but the things that you're giving the feeders to eat as well. And this is to try to ensure that your tarantulas get the very best nutrition that they can because their feeders were really, really healthy. And so the thought is that hopefully these nutrients are passed on to your tarantula through the circle of life. Gut loading isn't an absolute must that you have to do. A lot of people never gut load their feeders, to be honest, and they have healthy tarantulas. But if we imagine, you know, if, if you are somebody who eats meat or animal products, imagine how our bodies are impacted by the nutrition that our animal, the, the animals that we eat have consumed. And so couldn't it also be the same for other animals or our spiders? In my experience, I've always given my feeders slices of fruit or vegetables, things like potatoes, um, apples, they love that. Um, and I've done this with whether I've done, um, whether I've had the super worms, the crickets, or the cockroaches, which I currently have right now. But other people maybe try like a more varied diet too. I've heard that, you know, sometimes these feeders eat things like cereal. They also make like gels for feeders as well. But I personally try to go the natural route just because I think it's probably the most nutritious and probably um, gives the most probably potent vitamin content for the feeders to like metabolize and then for my spider to metabolize. So I really try to focus on like a nutrient dense diet for the feeders so that it could be passed on to Blinky and Spidey. And honestly, this is like kind of all a theory. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's any super scientific data about gut loading. I think that this is more just like, well, it should work like this, right? I think it's, it's interesting to think, you know, how does a tarantula actually utilize or synthesize vitamins or nutrients um, from human food if it's been consumed by the feeders. But I don't think that should discourage us from trying. Um, and I did a little bit of research. Jamie from Jamie's Tarantulas gave some pretty good advice about why we might try to do gut loading for our feeders. So one of the things is that it could really help with hydration. You know, tarantulas get their hydration, yes, from water, but also from their food. And hopefully your feeders are also hydrated because they've um, you know, gotten some good water content or some good food in them too, so that your tarantula can absorb the hydration from that. And Jamie from Jamie's Tarantulas also suggested that a tarantula might be able to reach its full size better if it does receive really well-fed and healthy feeders. Jamie also said that undernourished tarantulas lack the vibrancy and coloring that their well-nourished counterparts exhibit. I think that's really interesting because I actually didn't know that and I haven't I haven't like found the citation for that. So that that's just quoted directly from Jamie from Jamie's Tarantulas. 
But uh, that kind of makes sense. I mean, think about humans, right? If we're malnourished, we're going to be dull. Um, we might have some growth issues, we might have quite a few health issues or vibrancy issues. And so um, that would make sense because, you know, why wouldn't be, it be true for any other animal, right? Um, Jamie also suggested that it's possible to increase growth rate while decreasing the amount of food that the tarantula is fed. So it seems like the higher the quality, the smaller the portion sizes need to be because it's so nutrient dense. I think that's really interesting. Jamie also said improvement on overall health is really important. You know, think about it. If you were only going to eat junk food all day, um, you probably feel pretty lethargic. That might also pertain to tarantulas. If their feeders are eating organic matter, um, fruits, vegetables, things that are easily metabolized into vitamins, uh, I think the thought is that the tarantula will also benefit from that. And yeah, the last point that Jamie pointed out was increased hydration. And this is really important for molts because a uh, hydrated tarantula is probably going to have a successful molt more often than not. And I think uh, gut loading with natural food is probably really important also because um, I think it's important to keep tarantulas and spiders, oh, any animal really, but uh, away from chemicals. So, so that means that your feeders have to be, you know, bought at a pet store where, you know, they didn't <laughs> come from outside where your grass was sprayed and chemically treated. Um, but also that the food that they're eating isn't, you know, these feeders will eat anything and I think it's safest when they're actually eating organic stuff like fruits and vegetables so that, you know, I guess if you're feeding them chips or cereal or things like that, I know that they will eat it because they'll eat anything, but that might have certain chemicals in it or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't have any scientific data about that. That's just my opinion. But I do think that, you know, if the feeders have a good diet, the tarantula can also really benefit from that. And you're just kind of guaranteeing that there's not gonna be any, any issues caused by the diet. And so we may not have a lot of data on this. I don't think that gut loading feeders hurts. I think it can only help. And I think that feeding the, the feeders quality stuff can also only help. And so why shouldn't we try? I would love to hear your opinion on this. You know, and I'm not talking about power feeding, I'm just talking about gut loading. So um, power feeding is a totally different subject that maybe I'll cover another day. I don't have much experience in it because I don't do it, but um, I certainly do try to gut load. So let me know what you think in the comments and I look forward to talking to you guys. All right, take care and I'll see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Bye-bye.